This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Welcome everyone. In this video I will show you an updated version of my USB PD breadboard power supply. Actually the updates are not super critical, but I felt annoyed by the small design mistakes I did, so it felt better to fix them and publish an update video about it. Plus, I wanted to see the board in a different color as well, so as you can see, this version comes in white color. There were three little things I wanted to fix. First, I added an extra 1 megaohm resistor between the shield of the USB connector and the ground. It is not a groundbreaking update, but I typically include this resistor in my other designs, so I wanted to add it here as well. Another fix is the rerouting of the R7 and R8 resistors and replacing R8 with another value. This makes sure that even when the switch gets damaged and stays open, or the user does not put the switch to one of its endpoints, the regulator is clamped to one of the desired rail voltages. In this case, it is clamped to 5 volts. Clamping to 3.3 volts probably would be an even safer option, but I stuck with 5 volts for now. Then, on the back side, I had a typo and I wrote USD instead of USB, so that's fixed now. Some people noted that the expression decoy is not so correct to use, but I kept it because it is commonly used so it would make it easier for other people to find my content when they search for USB decoy or similar terms. Just to reiterate a little, the heart of the device is a CH224K chip that can negotiate wattage with a compatible USB power supply between 5 to 20 watts. It can sync up to 100 watts of power, which is enough for nearly any hobby projects that can be realized on a breadboard. That's why I think that my board is a great addition to any hobbyists, because it is so universal. It is very easy to design a circuit around this chip, even I could do it, and it is easy to control it. Since this white PCB looks so nice, I tried to record some assembly footage, so let's see how I build these boards.
So this is how the board turned out. I also soldered the true hole components in, however I did not include them in the assembly clips as you noticed, because they are not as spectacular as the SMD reflow process. If you want to recreate the same board, or if you want to get it assembled, please check my PCBWay project page, where I shared this device. You can find all the necessary information and resources needed there. Or, if you have your own project where you need PCB-related services, or 3D printing, or metalworking, check out PCBWay services and use them to get your designs manufactured. Of course, the USB is connected via a USB-C connector. The negotiated voltage is available via a screw terminal, which allows you to drive components with a larger current consumption and operating voltage. The rail voltage can be switched between 3.3 and 5V via a toggle switch, and the negotiated voltage can be set by a 3-way dip switch. The backside of the board is relatively clean. It contains my web page address, plus I added the table for the switch positions for the different requested voltages. If you take a closer look, we can see that the R8 resistor is a bit wonky. I actually forget that I had a new component value for the R8 in this design, and I had to find a resistor with nearly the same value, 57.6 kilo ohms, as it is in the design that you can see here. I found some 56k resistors, but they are 0805 instead of 0603 size, so there is a little misfit there. To test the board, I used an appropriate USB PD power supply. As you can see, it can provide all the necessary power to test all the modes supported by my board. At 20 volts, we can draw 65 watts power from the power supply, which is more than enough to drive a smaller stepper motor or an extremely bright LED and so on. Connecting the power supply while the dip switch is at the default 111 position, the chip will request 9 volt, and as you can see, the voltage measured at the screw terminal is about 9 volts. Switching to 110 will result in 12 volt at the screw terminal, and 100 will result in 15 volts. In order to request 20 volts, I need to configure the switch to 101 position. And finally, 5 volt can be achieved in any combination as long as the first switch is set to 0. If we move on to the rail voltage, we can see that at the 3.3 volt setting, I could measure 3.2 volts. This is within an acceptable deviation. But the real reason behind this deviation is, instead of the 57.6 kilo ohm resistor, I used 56 kilo ohm. I'm almost 100% convinced that if I use the correct value, the output voltage would be spot on. This is further corroborated when I switch to 5 watt, because the output only becomes 4.8 watts instead of 5 watts. I will get the proper resistor in the future and test it. As I mentioned earlier, initially I missed the fact that I needed another value for R8, due to the new wiring of the switch. I still had a batch of components from the previous project when I built the first version of this board, so I just automatically assembled everything with those components. Originally, R8 was 23.2 kilo ohms. Everything worked, but the 3.3 watt rail constantly gave me 2.3 watts. This was very confusing. It took me a while to remember that I redesigned this part and I needed another resistor for R8. Once I replaced the resistor, the values fell into their place or sort of. If you want to get or recreate this project, don't forget to visit my PCBWay project page and my website. There is a lot of information on both places. If you like these kind of projects and want to support me on a longer term, please consider becoming a YouTube channel member. I hope that you like this video, I hope you learned something and see you in the next video.